Good morning, everyone. This is Brother Dial from Fleming Island, Florida. I want to greet you today in the lovely name of Jesus Christ. And we're thanking Him. All praise, honor, and glory goes to Jesus Christ. It's one thing about it. It's all about Him and what He's done and what He's accomplished and what He's done for the people to prove that He was the Redeemer. He had to come and become a man. And then not only to become a man, but he had to live the life and be the sacrifice to pay for his own people. So God has done that. And so you talked about the love of God. Well, he sh he's shown his love. And now, well, how would we show ours back to him? By loving him. By loving him how? By serving him. By believing him. By living for him. And letting him live in and through us that uh, he could have a, another human experience in, the, in his body, his people. And so you just think about Paul said, it's no more I to live, but it's Christ now. He lives, he lives in through me. So that's what the whole thing about it's to let Jesus Christ take complete control. And that's what the new birth does. So thank God for the new birth. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you again. We thank you for the goodness, for your mercy. Lord, for your plan that you've laid out before the foundation of the world. You're the very omniscient God. That means you know all things. You knew the end. You knew the beginning. You knew everything in the middle, Lord. And so you wrote it in your book. You put it in your Bible. Guess how it would come out. And Lord, you started off in Genesis and you finished it up in the book of Revelation. The unveiling. And truly, God, it has been an unveiling in this day. And not only was God unveiled, but the devil, the cloak was taken off of him, how he would slip around and hide, hide in church, he's trying to hide behind the word by a piece or a part, but that his plan has been thwarted just as always. So Lord, we thank you for the great things you've done in our days. We recognize that and we give you all the praise and the glory for it in Jesus' name. Thank you. Amen. So today, I want to take a, a subject, and I was reading the other day in, in uh, Genesis, and I come back to this uh, particular passage here, and I'm going, I'm going to be reading out of Genesis 7, I just want to read a couple of verses there, because it'll get us to the place uh, where we want to go, but I want to give this a title, God Shut the Door, God Shut the Door, and then you'll see what we talk about as we read here in the scripture, so if you want to read along, turn over to uh, Genesis 7, and we're going to read verse 1 and verse 16 out of Genesis 7. And if you'd like to go back and read the whole thing, you can. It'll give you the picture. But this is where we want to get to uh, today. God shut the door. Genesis 7, 1. And the Lord said to Noah. Who said to Noah? The Lord said to Noah. Come into the ark, you and all your household. <clears throat> For I consider you godly amongst this generation about that the whole generation he only considered Noah and his family verse 16 and those that entered were male and female just as God had commanded him then the Lord shut him in so 
we come through this whole thing. It says the animals were to come in two by two, and that's what it was talking about there. They entered male and female just as God had commanded them. And when he got up, he got everything. He got Noah in. He got the animals in. Boom. God closed the door. So God, <clears throat> then he said the Lord shut him in. And I was thinking the other day, you know, the, the ark was some 450 foot long and way high sides and so on. And can you imagine just how big uh, this door was to get, it wouldn't have been so much to get Noah, and no doubt it was the ark is sitting on the ground, so the door, when it folded down, would have to be low enough where the people and the animals could step in. And you wonder, well, my goodness, you know, when that, when that thing, when the water comes, won't it leak? No, uh -uh. God sealed them in. And that's the same thing with us. When God puts his seal on us, there ain't nothing, there ain't nothing getting in because it's been sealed by God himself. And you figure, I think it said Noah was on the flood 150 days and it never talked about the ark leaking one bit. Oh, we got over there. You know, you see some of these these movies and so on about the ships that are leaking and the people, and there was no no leak nowhere. That thing stayed up there all that time, went through the storms and floated around all that time and never was a leak. So that when, that just goes to show when God constructs something, it is it's made right. There's there's nothing, no problems with it. So, praise the Lord. So, this is what we want to talk about, is that uh, the Lord shut the door. God shut the door. Amen? And so, I saw this, this uh, quote uh, a day or two ago, and I thought I would share it because it fits so perfectly with what, what we see today. And this was in 1965, so 1965, that would be 35, what, 58 years ago. Yeah, 58 years ago. This was said, and, and it fits perfectly with what's going on today. It could almost have been a prophecy. But in trying to do God a service without it being his will there in Shreveport, he said he chooses his own person by his foreknowledge. Like he said in Romans 8 here, that Esau, that the election of God might stand true. Now, the election is choosing. That Esau and Jacob, both born of holy parents, twins, that his election might stand true. And he said, he said, I hate Esau and I love Jacob before Either boy was born. Well, that's really something, ain't it? No. And he said, God knows what's in man, and he knows what's in you, too. He knowed it from the beginning what, was, what it was, and therefore he can make everything work just exactly on clock time. We get all nervous and frustrated, and he, you never see him frustrated. They don't know it. See, everything's working all right. And so we can say, if he could say that then, we can say that this morning. Everything's working all right. Just exactly the clock's ticking. These things are supposed to happen. Well, because why? When you get away from God's Word, you're on the wrong track. And they said, now these things are supposed to happen. All these women with short hair and these men wearing there, they got their hair like their wives. I see them absolutely, these roller curlers in their hair, curl it up in the front. What a perversion. Amen. 
That's what it is. Because man was never made, created to be such as that. He said, now, why is all this? What is this perversion? He said, it's the results of Satan's Eden. Because here, we're living here in Satan's Eden. He said it was. He, and he's took over. He's took over the churches. He took over government. He's took over everything. And so when you see all these things, when you look and you say, what is wrong with these people? You just say, that's the results of Satan's Eden. And like her, she's trying to cut her hair like her husband. Her husband's letting his hair grow like his wife. And she is, now listen, she is wearing his clothes and he's wearing her underneath clothes. See, there you are. She's getting masculine, yeah, mm -hmm. and he's getting feminish. Boy, just look on the people today and you'll see that. See, it's Satan's Eden. Contrary to what God made it at the beginning, that's the truth. So look here, we've never seen such a day when people claim they don't even know what they are. Where they don't, a woman don't claim to be a woman, a man don't claim, they say they're in the middle of some kind of a, well, who ever heard of such stuff? But that's the results. All these things are the results of Satan's Eden, and God knew it was going to be here. But along with this time, there he knew that we were going to be here. So he's going to take care of us, just like the devil's out there perverting them. And you would wonder why. Well, if those people all belong to Satan, why would he do that to them? Because he hates the image of God. Man was created in the image of God. That's why. And he's got man down lower to worm. That's what he's done to God's image by these perverted people. And you wonder sometimes, well, how can it be? Amen. Well, you know now. Because it's a perversion of the original. So, don't worry. Everything's working all right. I don't care how dark it gets. There's always a light. So, don't look at the darkness. Look at the light. In the light is God's word of the day and the hour that you live. Let there be light. Amen. Now, let's move on. Now, remember, we're talking about God Noah didn't shut the door. Noah was inside. So God shut them at his time. It wasn't at Noah's time. Noah didn't say at a certain time I'll close the door. No, it wasn't nothing to do. Noah built the ark and God told him to get in and the animals got in and then when God's time, he shut the door. Amen. So, Noah didn't have to worry about closing the door. That was all up to the Almighty God doing that. And it's still up to Almighty God this day. I don't care what a man or this that the other said. It's all about Him. Now, this is a little message called The Hour Has Come there in uh, 1951. He said, now Jesus was speaking here. He said, he said Father, the time has come. And there are seasons for everything. He said, do you believe that? You sow in a certain season and you reap in a certain season. And there's a season when time comes and that's the right thing for these to happen. He said, do you believe that? The time came one time for God to destroy the world with water. Well, we're going back to Noah. And he sent a man by the name of Noah. Well, if he was going to destroy the world, why did he have to send a man for? Because there's always warning before judgment. And God got the world ready for judgment. Yeah. Well, why was they ready? Because you go back and read it in Genesis 6. There was evil man. Some have thoughts and hearts was continuing on evil. And God sent a man to preach to him. And while he was preaching on his testimony, building the ark, it was getting ready for what? God was getting the world ready for judgment. 
But they didn't know nothing about it. They was having a time, they thought. And he taken, the time came for Noah to go in the ark and look. Noah could not go in the ark before God was ready for him to go. But when the season came for Noah to go in the ark, God shut the door behind Noah. Is that right? All the opportunities for everyone else to enter, ever enter, it was gone because the door was not coming back and open. Because that God had closed the door. And there's coming a time when people's going, there's coming a time when God's going to close the door for every one of you. Do you believe that? A man certainly can send away his day of grace. Well, they did in Noah's day. They did in Jesus' day. And they have in this day. Well, it was a simple message. It's going to rain. I've got a, I've got a way of escape. Come into the ark. And the people just laughed and made fun. And it said they were scoffers and mockers about Noah working. And they said, what's this old man talking about? He's talking about rain. There's no such thing as rain. And so they believed all of their scientific. But look, if God said it's going to rain, he's, he's got a way to put rain up there. And he did a lot of it. So... But what happened? They sinned away their day of grace. And they just went right on. And that's what the world is doing today, going right on, paying no attention to what God has said. Now, we want to look at a little message called God, the conflict between God and Satan. And there has always been a conflict between that. But look at here. We know who wins. Who gets thrown into the lake of fire? The devil and all his angels. Now, let's go here. And when he went into the ark, you know what? God shut the door. Oh, my. Nobody had to shut the door. God shut it. It was all the last chance to be saved was gone. And that's what people don't realize. Well, my goodness, after it started to rain and about time the water got up to their chin, they was all ready to go in, but it was too late. <clears throat> and that's the thing today. The convincing part is before it started to rain. But see, they wasn't interested then. And that's when, when this world's on fire and whatever else is going to happen, oh, everybody want to go in then, but it's too late. So the last chance to be saved was gone. So I imagine the kids got, a, got arm in arm around about 500 yard arc there and the old folks walked around and said, well, that old fellow was smothered to death in there. See? So on making fun of him just the same, made jeering. And you know, every person, now listen, maybe this will help you. Listen close. When you take God's word and follow God's word, there is many times after you've already done all you can do, your faith is put to the test. Well, look there, Noah went in and he figured, well, God closed the door and we'll be gone. Well, it's set there seven days. Just making a testimony. And people wondering, well, what's he doing there? What's going to happen? But on the seventh day, all of a sudden, the clouds rolled in, the, clock, the, the skies got dark, and there was thunder and lightning, and here come the rain. So that's what, when you've done what you've done, look here, it's not about you, it's all about Him. Noah said it's going to rain because God's told him it's going to rain. That was the message. All he had to do was stay with it. That's all we have to do. We can't make anything come to pass. We just tell about it. And it's God. He's the one that shuts the door. He's the one that calls the rain. He's the one that sent judgment. Amen. But the people 
They just can't seem to understand that. Now, I want to get over here to souls that are in prison now. Well, you would wonder why they're in prison now. He said, oh, listen, <clears throat> all those who rejected the message of the hour before doom. Hmm. So there's been a message of the hour in every day. Noah had it. Moses had it. You don't think? Well, I bet you um, um, Pharaoh would have liked to back up and say, hey, what about this? But it was too late. God opened the way in the Red Sea for the Israelites and he closed it on the Egyptians. How about that? See, when God opens the way, it's for his people. It's not for just ever, everybody that thinks they can come that way. No, you got to be predestinated to this way. And why? Your name was put on the Lamb's Book of Life before the foundation of the world. That means that you're coming. So, those who rejected the message of the hour before doom, the gospel was preached to the doom first, for they went without mercy. Noah sh shut up was a testimony. God shut the door after his third pool. You mean Noah had a third pool? According to the prophet, he certainly did. And after his third pool, and there was a third pool at Sodom. The doors were shut. There's no more mercy. He said, ten, couldn't it be found? Remember when the angel or God himself was talking to Abraham and said, well, if you could find fifty, if you could find four. He said, if you could find ten. Well, he couldn't find ten. And the lost had the gospel preached that could not be saved because it would just been that way in every age. Every age reject the message before judgment. So that means that every age has to have a message. Well, this age is no different. And our message is the culmination of the Word itself. All the mysteries, everything else has been revealed. And what do the people? They say, oh, that's nonsense. That's the craziest thing I've ever heard. Okay, go ahead. He said, have you done it again? Is that appearing in the pillar of fire down here on the river? Is that appearing uh, along in the message of the cutting women and throwing the places where it should be and rebuking those ministers who take the place with the domination instead of staying with the word? When God has thoroughly vindicated that it's Him. I look here, there's, been, there's never been a message that's been so thoroughly vindicated as the one that God has sent this day. And look here. It's done it with everything to prove that it was Him. But what do the people do? They walk right on shake their head like nothing ever happened. Go right back into the old, cold, formal churches and the ones that even claim it, they won't accept what the real revelation of what God has sent in this day. That Jesus Christ is on the scene. He's not coming. He's here. He's fulfilled His word to prove that He was here. That He had come. But no, no, no. We're all looking off in the distance somewhere. Because so and so said so. Mm -hmm. So he said, God has thoroughly vindicated that it's him. Not some poor ignorant unthearn, unlearned thing like a man. Well, no, it's not the man. God just uses a man to speak the word. It's God because God is the word. And God judges everything by his word. Seems like the people just can't seem to comprehend that, but that's what he, he will judge this world by Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ is the Word. Well, you got a Word forever. Look here, they had a Word back there that it's got to rain, and they didn't believe it. Well, what happened? They missed it. God closed the door. That, that finished it. What are they going to appeal to? Mm-hmm. Now, so he said, 
And have we now come to the spot that the third pool would return again to the lost eternally? Look here. The third pool. I don't care. When God sends a message, look here. The ones of that day that believed Noah because God told Noah in his hand, you go into the ark. Well, the same, the same ark was, was, a, was a, a saving to them. The water was saving because when the water, the judgment was outside, look here, what happened? The waters made the ark rise up above all the judgments. See, so the message has got two sides to it. It's a saving and, it, and it's a judgment. But the, see, the people can't seem to gather that. God sends a warning and then there's judgment. And He's just because He has warned and warned and warned. But what do the people do? They we go on them, well, we, we, we're so and so. Well, who cares? It's all about God and His Word. And it was in that day, it was in every day, and it is in this day. But they can't say, well, I go to church. Well, no doubt. How many people in Noah's day, they had their own religion. They had them. Devils always had one somewhere. And they thought, well, I'm just as good as he is. Well, it proved that they wasn't, and it's going to prove again this day the same way. But no, no, no. So, the third pool would return again to the eternal loss. And we're going to talk on the third pool at the very end so we can see that the third pool has been here and it come, what? There was two sides. There was a saving for the third pool and there was a condemning, there was a judgment for the third pool. So which side are you on? Now, scriptural signs of the time there in Birmingham. He said, you can't figure God out. He said, you got to sit down by the side of Him and talk it over. Take off your shoes as it were down by and lay down your education. Look straight into His Word and say, I don't care what anyone else says. You promised. You have promised it. And it's here for this day. That's the truth. Moses took off his shoes, watch. The voice that come from it, if it hadn't been a scriptural voice, Moses would have never believed it. The sign attracted his attention, and the sign was to attract the attention of the prophet. A prophet himself is a sign. A prophet himself is a sign. Well, what was the sign? When God sends a prophet, look out. Judgment follows it. Why? Because the word comes to the prophet. And God is going to judge the world by his word. Amen. That's, I don't know why people couldn't gather that. That is so simple. Say, judge it. He said it always has. It always will. Well, we've had a prophet this day. A vindicated prophet sent by God. He was a born of a prophet. Born here. God vindicated at His birth all through His life with signs, wonders, miracles, everything. Even the pillar of fire being taken over His head and then checking it out and saying it's the only supernatural being ever photographed. But did the people, uh, some kind of telepathy or something, some kind of mind reading this out of the other and slamming off just like they did every messenger down through the time? Well, there's going to be no excuses if the people don't go. He said, there's no around it. It goes over the top of the people and they never know until it's too far. They never know until it's too far. Well, all around the ark, it was too far when the rain started to come. Look here, there was no, God is not going to reopen the door. No wonder Jesus said, you build the tombs of the prophets and whiten them, but you're the ones that put them in there. As your fathers did, so will you. Mm-hmm. They did it. Now, I want you to listen to this as the Patmos vision there. As Brother Ram started on the Revelation of Jesus Christ series, 
and he makes right as he started he makes a, a really a profound statement here which uh, I think most people have missed or if they read it they didn't think well you know this is all future 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 and they never know when they get to the future well if everything's always future 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 and you never get to the future my goodness, what good is it? It has to come to pass when God speaks. Amen. And look here, everybody knows there's, we're in the end time. Everybody, oh, we're in the end time. All these things, look at, look at all these wars and rumors of war, the earthquakes and everywhere, and all these things happen, and all this perversion. Oh, oh. Well, do you think they thought they was in the end time? They'd tighten up. But do they tighten up? They go on just like they did in every other day. And the ones that you tell them what it is, they think you've lost your mind. Hmm. So, but I want you to, to notice something. And he's going, and if you ever have time, go back and listen to this. I mean, it, Brother Ranham, he gets so anointed with this preaching and so on. And so many great things come out of it. And then... He kept saying all. He said, "He said I can't preach it all at one time." But he said, "We're going. We're going. We're going to put it in a book." And they did. It's called the Exposition of the Seven Church Ages. And you need to get that book, and you need to read it and believe what it says. Now let's start here. This is in the Patmos vision here, and let's see what he said. Now let's watch him just a little bit further as we take the rest because he's starting here in revelation chapter one and you want to take that chapter and go through it and he's come all the way down now to the 13th verse of revelations one and he reads the scripture in the midst that's the middle of the golden candlesticks one like the son of man clothed with a garment down to the foot and girded about the paps with a golden girdle. Now people read that, and they say, well, that's a good description, but what does it mean? Well, that's why God sent a prophet. To let us know, because he is God's divine interpreter of the word. He's the one that has the authority, not a theologian, a prophet, has the authority. Now, let's see what he said. Now, here's more proof that this doctrine is right about it being the Lord's day. Because he said, John, back over there in A.D. 95, he was transmitted by these visions over into the Lord's day. Well, hello, that's where we are. So, he was transmitted into our day and seen all these things. And he's writing it now in a book. So, he said, this, this is proof it being the Lord's day. Did you notice him? Who? He said, he was not a priest during this time, neither was he a king. He was a judge. Jesus, the judge. Notice, a priest, a high priest, when he went into the sanctuary or went in to minister to service, he tied himself around the waist. He, he's talking about this verse 13 of Revelation 1. He said when he goes into service, he ties himself around the waist. But up here, it says he's tied around the paps. He's tied around the, the breast up here. Tying his girdle around the waist meant that he was serving. So when he had it tied around his waist, the priest was, he was serving. That's what this, this, is, this is meaning. But tied the girdle up meant that he was serving. He never tied it over his shoulder. But here he comes out talking about this 13th chapter. Here he comes out walking out with the girdle tied about the top with a sash over his shoulders. Girded about the paps, the breast. With a golden girdle girded up high. What is it? And a 
attorney and judge. The judge with the sash over his shoulders girded up here, not down as a priest. See, that shows he wasn't in the priesthood now. Listen, listen, listen. John went all the way over into the Lord's day and saw him coming as the judge. Well, glory to God, we have too. We've even got the picture of it. The picture is right here, hanging on this wall. It was a picture that was in Life magazine, May 17th, 1963, went around the world. And look, you can't hardly find one of those magazines now because they've all been bought up or whatever because the people know there's something special in them. It was God showing to the world the very thing that John saw, we saw, because he come as judge. And we're going to read it. So, John, now, if you can catch this, John was transmitted by, he never left the Isle of Patmos. He was out there for, what, some two years. But he was transmitted by vision over into <laughs> the Lord's day seeing the future and writing about it. So John went all the way over into the Lord's day and saw him coming as judge. And John, in, in our day, we have seen the judge. Amen? That's, that's, that's what it was all about. And we're going to go through that. But now, it is the rising of the sun there in Jeffersonville. He said, well, if you'll turn the picture like this and look, you can, and he's talking about this picture, the one that was in Life magazine. He said, if you'll turn the picture and turn it probably from the audience, it's Christ. How much simpler could it be? This picture, he's got it in his hand. He's pointing to it, and he said, the picture is Christ. Well, he didn't look like the Jesus that went up. But this one, he's got a white wig on. Something's happened. He said, see his eyes looking here just as perfect as it, wearing the white wig of supreme deity and judge of all heavens and earth. What did that white wig mean? That he was the judge of all heavens and earth. He come as judge because it was time for judgment. But what happened? There's a warning before judgment. If you can receive the warning, you know, we, we receive all kinds of warnings in life. And you know, when you go to, to cross a railroad crossing, there's, there's warning lights and there's bars. And you know, people are so silly. They pay no attention to the warnings and they drive around and what happens? Boom! The train hits them. Why? Because they did not heed the warning. Well, that's just a simple fact. When you don't heed the warning, look, your judgment follows that. Just like it did in Noah's day. God shut the door. Hmm. But oh no, we're the big church. I don't care how big your church is. If you ain't with the word of the hour, look here, you all somewhere else. <laughs> you're, maybe you're out there trying to build your own boat, but it, look here, there was only one boat that I read about in the Bible that made it. I don't care how many boats they said, oh, the, well, you know, we'll pull the boat out and we'll get in the boat in the river. Well, look at here, it didn't work. There was only one. And it was the one that God built. And there's only one word that's going to take you the place you need to go, and it's the one that God spoke. Hmm. Now, he said he is, he is a supreme judge. There is no other but him. Praise God, hallelujah. None other but him. So you don't have to focus on nobody else. You don't have to focus on Mary, none of the saints, nobody else. You focus strictly on Jesus Christ. 
There's none other but him. And that is a perfect identification, again, the vindication that this message is true. This is the truth. It is true. Making him not a third person, but the only person. If you could just get that through your head. He's not a second person. He's not a third person. He is the only person, and he is the person of God. Amen. But oh no. You just talk to some of these Trinitarians. And my goodness. Whew. Well, they can't see it. They can't see it. Look here. If you, if you don't have eyes, how are you going to see? So now let's go on. What is the attraction on the mountain there? And the other day standing there, turn the picture to the right. And there is, there is Jesus as he was in the seven church ages with the, with the white wig on showing supreme deity that he's Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. Now he said he turned the picture because this is the way the picture shows it in the magazine. And when you turn the picture to the right, you see the face of Jesus Christ there. But look, how are you going to see it if you don't have eyes to see with? So with this, and he just said he's the same as he was in the seven church ages. Well, John's already described him. He's got hair white as wool, feet like brass, eyes like fire. So that's the way he was, and that's the way this picture shows him that same way. And why is it showing him this way? Because he is supreme judge. There is none other but him. And that's a perfect identification, again, vindication that this message is true. Man, the message is true. You don't have to doubt it. Just come to it. Believe it. Whatever it says, just believe it. That's the way, because it come from God Himself. And He says, He is the supreme deity, judge of all eternity, standing there, confirm the message of this hour, and it shall be light about the evening time. What's it all about? Yeah, what's it all about? Judgment is in the land. Judgment is, look here, judgment was in the land in Noah's day, but they didn't know it. And the judgment has to come to a culmination. And it come to a culmination when the door was shut. No, you ain't going to change your mind then. It, the mind changing was over before the door was shut. So, but God shut the door. And he had, look here, he, he was not in a, in, a, in a hurry to shut the door. He had Noah preach 120 years. That whole generation got the message. And what did it do? It made them even worse because they shunned their day of grace. Now, I'm going to go to a message called The Works is Faith Expressed in the Shreveport. He said, now, he asked the question, and I was thinking today that, you know, one time Jesus, who was the Word made flesh, he asked a question. And he said, who do you say I, the Son of Man, am? And one said, well, somebody said you might be one of the prophets. He said, but no, who do you say that I am? And Peter spoke up and said, you're the you're the Christ. You're the Son of the living God. And He speaks back. Now, God asked the question through Jesus, and He's answered it through Peter. How do you say that? Because He said, Peter, flesh and blood never revealed this to you, but my Father which is heaven has revealed it to you. Amen. How, how God gets His message out. He asks a question and then he answers his own question. Because he said, flesh and blood never revealed it. And upon this rock, this rock of revelation, 
I'm going to build my church. And so asking and answering for a purpose so that you can know who he was and is. Amen. Because if that question would have never answered, we'd have never known. But he did. And we did. Now we know. Now, he says, why wigged? Well, why? The old English judges and the Jewish judges used to wear a wig, and they do yet in England. And he said, that's the supreme authority. He wears a wig that shows him standing there wigged by angels. How many? Seven angels was his wig. And he is Alpha and Omega. He is the su supreme judge. There's none other but him. How many times? None other but him. And he used to look upon as Alpha and Omega. And the, he was there. He was a young man. No more than 30 years old. Wearing a white wig. A, a wig of white. Showing that he's supreme God. The Father has committed all judgment into the hands of the Son. Hallelujah. The revelation is never wrong. Speak it anyhow. No matter what it sounds like, it goes right with the Word. So what about it? The revelation is never wrong. When God gives you a true revelation, it's never wrong. It don't make no difference what it sounds like. And when God gives it, it is the truth. Stay with it. Now, I have heard, but now I see. He said, now, how many of you take the tape? He said, you've heard of what time is it, sirs? Did, did we show those magazines and things a, a year before it happened? Science had stuck. There was the Lord Jesus crowned and with that white wig, as you've seen in the Bible in Revelation 1, when we talked about that, if you want to read it, you go back to Revelation 1, 14, and there he is. He's got, he got hair white like wool. And he said, and in Daniel... Well, the supreme judge of all, whether you want to read it, you can go back to Daniel, the ancient of days come with hair white like wool. That's in Daniel 7, 9. Look here, we're not talking about some, some Mickey Mouse stuff. We're talking about the Bible. We're talking about what God put in His book and what He's done and what He's shown and what He's done and shown is with the Word. But can they buy it? No, no, no. They think, well, well, if he, had, if he come that way and showed that way in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, look here, why can't he manifest himself that way? But oh, no, no, they, they ain't having that. Oh, that's some, some guy the other day on Facebook. Somebody put the picture, and he said, that picture is a lie. Well, that poor man, that poor ignorant man he is in more trouble than he knows about because I didn't take the picture. I didn't put it in Life magazine. God did. God shut the door. God done all these things. And would you imagine something? Well, we've, we've got ignorant people every day. And what do they do? They, I, I, when, I, when I read that, I put it back, he said, out of the mouth is life and death, and you have just caused yourself to die. You're twice dead, plucked up by the roots. What, what, what would people, because they're ignorant, they don't know. They think that they know so much, and they don't know nothing. They, if that, that guy would have been in Noah's day, he would have been one of the ones on the outside knocking on the door and said, Noah, let me in. But Noah didn't open the door. I don't care how much they knocked and how much they begged and how much they pleaded and all the tears they cried. It was not to open the door. You've sinned away your day of grace, but the people seem to again, well, everything's going on good for me, okay. And it was for them too, until it started to rain. Huh. And you know, 
that poor guy might have said that just so that I could answer him and I could say it in this message. This how, this how silly people are to put their mouths on things that they know nothing about and cause themselves to be judged. So now, okay, he said, so in Revelations 1 and in Daniel, the supreme judge of all heavens and earth, when science can't even see it themselves, and in the observatory out there in the University of Arizona and down through Mexico, they're searching here for the last two years, and as it was told you, it was going to happen before. Yes, sir, Brother Manum said, look here, I had a vision, and I'm going out there, and I'm going to be 40 miles northeast of Tucson, and I'm going to be there, and I'm going to be pulling this little bird off of my pants, and boom, seven angels is going to come, and they're going to pick me up. Well, glory to God. He said that, and... Uh, December 30th, 1962. And then he's out there in April and boom, all of a sudden these things happen. And not only did they happen, they take the picture of it and put it and send it all around through the world. And wondering, well, this mystery cloud it was a mystery to them, but it's not a mystery to us. We know what it was. It was Christ, <laughs> but not to them. So he said it, and God done it. Well, if that is enough vindication, you would think people could read that and then see it. How could it be so perfect? Tells it what it is. Tells it where it's going to be all about it, what he's doing and everything else, and boom, boom, boom. The prophecy comes to pass. Amen. But no, no, not to them. Bunch of nonsense. Okay, that's what they thought about Noah. Bunch of nonsense. It raining out there working on some old... Now, the breach, and we're talking about God shut the door. The breach between the seven church ages and the seven seals. He leaves, now listen, he leaves the throne of intercessor as a slain lamb to be lion king to bring the world to judgment. Did you hear what he said? He's changing now. Revelation 5. Go read it for yourself. He comes as a lamb. But he said, the lion of the tribe of Judah has prevailed. And so now he's changed from the from the land through the church ages as that intercessor sitting there and now he's come as the king to bring the world to judgment who has rejected his message. Well, there's got to be a message for him, for them to reject. He's not a mediator. Oh, well, look here. You ask him, and they say, oh yeah, well, he's still up there mediating. Uh -uh. There's no, nothing to mediate for. He took the book. And all that was in the book was the redeemed. He's already redeemed it. Now, remember in the Old Testament teaching, now as we heard, when the blood went off the mercy seat, what was it? A judgment seat. And when the Lamb slain walked forward from eternity out of the Father's throne and took his, took his right, it was a judgment seat. He become not a Lamb, but a Lion King. And look at here. And he calls for his Queen to come stand by his side. Know ye not, the saints shall judge the earth. What we're going to judge it with the Word, Jesus Christ. Amen. That's the only judgment there is, a word. Daniel said the judgment was set and the book were opened and 10,000 times 10,000 ministered to him, king and queen. And then another book was opened, which is the book of life. That's for the church and the king and queen stood there. What? Judging. Judgment. Well, what, what, was, what was the judgment? 
for those who had rejected his message. It was the same in Noah's day. They rejected his message. He was telling them, you can come into the ark and you can be saved from this oncoming judgment. That said, old man's lost his mind. Yeah. How about the three kinds of believers here? He said, but remember, the bride, don't, don't come up in that group. She goes in the rapture. The bride goes in the rapture, not these other make-believers. And at the judgment, the judgment was set and the book was opened. The wicked and another book, which is the book of life, was opened. And there was the bride there to judge it. See, another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the sheep on one side and the goats on the other See, and the people that died back yonder that never had the opportunity, they will be the ones that will be separated. So the bride is doing the judgment and the door was shut. Amen. But they think, well, the door's not shut. The, look here, when you reject this message, the door is shut. Now, let's look at question and answer there. Number 3, 64. Now notice, the Bible said when Daniel saw, he wrote, look here, listen. He wrote the, the first book of Revelation, Daniel. And we notice in the vision, he saw him come to the ancient of time, whose hair was white as wool. How many will remember reading that? And did you notice John and Revelation come to the same thing? Revelation 1, we just talked so. How can these two come to the same thing and God reproduce it in this day and the people just blow it off like it never happened? But they have. And the people around the mess, they don't even know what is coming. They, they don't even know that it was the coming of the Lord. It was judgment on the hand. And they think all these things is out future somewhere. No matter how many times he goes through it or how many times he says it, it's all in the future or it's all done, been worked out in the past. Now, so Daniel and John seen the same thing and he stood there. His hair was white as wool, his feet the way it looked. The ancient of time, the ancient of time. That is, he had no time. That's why I was saying, because he was the E. Eternal One. Not eternal them, the eternal one, Christ. And he came. Uh oh, he came. And now watch. And the saints come to the earth, and the book was open. Another book was open, which is the book of life. One book. They came to the judgment, and he came with them ten thousand times ten thousand. Is that right? Ministered to him the bride, the queen, and the king. And the door was shut. Now, let's look at this first seal. This is bringing on down to our day. People wonder about this door being good. Well, that was just for Noah's day. Well, let's find out. He makes this statement in the first seal there in 1963. He's talking about Matthew 25, the ten virgins. He said, remember when they went to buy oil. Well, why, was they, why did they go to buy oil? Because they did not have oil. The ones that had oil went with him. Who? The bridegroom. They went to buy oil. Oh, you say, now wait a minute, Brother Ben. I don't know about that. When they went to buy oil, when they come back, the bride was done, gone, and the door was shut. Go read it, Matthew 25. And they knocked on the door and said, let us in. Well, when God closes the door, the door is closed. And as he said, there's going to many come to that day, and they're going to say, Lord, didn't I do this, and didn't I do that, and blah, blah, blah. And he never turned around. He said, I never knew you, you worker of iniquity. Huh. Could it be? Could it be? He said, the bride was done gone and the door was shut. And they knocked and said, let us in, let us in. Brother Brown knocked on the pulpit several times. But they were not 
but they were out in outer darkness. Oh my. And God, what happened? God shut the door. Now, I told you we was going to get back to this third pool. He said, because it's always that third pool. Well, and souls in prison, he was talking about the third pool. And then over here, we, he tells us exactly what the third pool is. Because when you reject that, look here, there, there's nowhere to go. You're, you're, you're doomed. You're done for. The door is shut. That's all there is to it. But most people don't even know what it is. And, and they're, they're claiming. But there is a third pool. He said Jesus had one. And he's got one down in this day too. What was Jesus? He taught. He, he went and preached to the doomed that could never be saved. Now. This is in the anointed ones at the end time. Because there's going to be some. Now notice. The very day when this messenger, not when he starts on, and he's talking about his ministry. He is the messenger. He is the seventh angel. But he said, not when he starts on, but when he begins to declare his message. And his message was the very revelation of, of Jesus Christ, the very mystery of God revealed. All the mysteries. He said the seventh angels have not just one certain mystery, but he gathers up all the mysteries that's been lost down through these ages, and he reveals the whole thing. I have not shunned to declare the whole word of God to you. Amen. So when he begins to clear his message, the first pool, healing. Second pool, prophesying. Now, we were look, looking for the third pool because he said if they reject that, boom. He said the third pool, the opening of the word, the mysteries revealed. Now you know what the third pool is. It's the opening of the Word. It's the message of the hour. It's the revelation of Jesus Christ, the whole complete thing. There's not anything left out. We have the complete revelation. And the people scratch their head and they, well, how about this and how about that? And they can get off on some of the, ooh, my, my, my. Like a fellow said, they, they're wondering, well, well can, can a woman wear pajamas? <laughs> If she wants to wear pajamas, let her wear them. That ain't got nothing to do with eternal life. They worry about something like that and totally miss the whole revelation of Jesus Christ. Mm. Now, the mystery, he said, there's no more. There is no more higher order to reveal the word than prophet, because the word comes to the prophets. But the only way the prophet can be vindicated is by the word. Well, he was. What he spoke come to pass. Never one time did he miss it. But not to this world. No, no, no nothing about it. And remember. The third pool was the opening of them seven seals. Seven seals, not six, seven. And we know what the seventh was. It was the coming of the Lord when He come wearing that white wig. And the judge of all heavens and earth. Judgment is in the land, but there was a warning given. And what did they do with it? You know, it said over there in Revelation, he gave old Jezebel a space to repent. Did she repent? No, she got worse. Huh. Did this much repent? No, they have got worse. And worse, and he said they will get worse. Huh. But God knows all about it. He said... The third pool was the opening of them seven seals to reveal the hidden truth that's been sealed in the Word. Do you see it? 
Well, if you can see it, you are a blessed person. If you can see it, that just means that your name is on the book. If you can see it, you're inside. You're not outside. Because how many times does it have to be presented? One time, two times, three times, four times? How many times? And you reject, you reject, you reject, you reject. But look here. As God shut the door in that day, God knows the time, the season, all about it. He knows the clock is ticking just right. He knows these things had to be. He knew that we would be here. He knew that there would be a Satan's Eden, that when Satan would totally take over everything, he took over the church, politics, and everything else. And that's why everything's in such a chaos. That's why you see these people look like creatures that come off of another planet somewhere, don't even belong here. It's a perversion. But he knew all these things. And look here. God shut the door after the third pool. Look here. The third pool is not coming. The third pool is here. Look here. Maybe you've never heard about the third pool. Maybe you didn't know what it was. Maybe you didn't know anything. Well, glory to God, you know it now. And if, look here, if you're predestinated, if your name is on that book, as soon as you hear these things, you say, glory to God, I see it. Amen. I don't know, there's something inside of me that tells this is right. And it is right because it was happened by the way of Almighty God. And he does it like he's always done it. Go back and search through the scriptures. He didn't do it some strange way. He done it his Bible way. He sent a man with a message and he backed it up and he vindicated it. And it don't need no other vindication. It just needs somebody to believe it. And the elect, the chosen ones will. They will. Amen. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, that you were patient in Noah's day. You let him preach 120 years to the whole generation. Well, Lord, we're way past the generation of this. Lord, if the prophet left in 1965 in a generation is 40 years, that would be 2005. Look here. We are in a total new generation. That, that generation can't, can't go back. They can't change anything. But Lord, we're talking to a generation today because you told us to take the book and eat it. And look, he said, it's sweet as honey in my mouth. It's going to be bitter in your belly. But you've got to go and to prophesy again, Lord. So that's the day and the hour. Lord, is there still, is there still a time? Is there still a way? Can the people make it? Is it warning or is it judgment? Warning, then judgment. Lord, I don't know. All I know is to give them the word. What you said, what, what would be. And it's here, Lord. We see the day and the hour that we live in. Lord, if the people could only realize, and surely if there's something inside that's come from God, they could realize a very word for their day and the hour not say well i don't understand it don't understand it believe it how could we understand all these things that god has sent he never said that he said just believe to him that believeth lord oh lord jesus continue to help us lord help us to speak this word loud and clear sure with a voice that you give us lord in the days of the voice. That's the word of the hour, Lord. That's the word for this day. That's the word that you sent. That is you in voice form, Lord. So help us, Lord, to do it. And we'll give you all the praise. We thank you, Lord, that you made us part of it from the before the beginning of the world. Give you all the praise, the honor, the glory. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen.